Hey, my name is James Nicholson and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about what impact the new base rate of 4.25% is going to have on homeowners and property investors alike. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video to get all of the information and hopefully it will help you make some more informed decisions. Now, while you're here, can I ask you a very quick favour? Please, can you smash that like button? That helps me greatly with the YouTube algorithm. And we're also on the way to 5,000 subscribers. We might hit it in the next month if you help us out. Now, more than 60% of you watching these videos aren't subscribed. So take that finger of power if that's you. Smash the subscribe button and hit the bell notification. We've got new content every single day on growing a property portfolio. So let's talk about this base rate. New base rate hit last week, 4.25%. Not really what we want, but slightly better than expected. So what does it mean for property investors and what's currently going on in the market? Well, obviously, the last 11 or so meetings with the Bank of England, we've gone from a base rate of 0 0.1 to 4.25%. And it was 11 increases back to back that got us there. That makes a big difference for property investors. You see, we actually invest slightly different to residential. Now, on a residential mortgage, you will have a capital repayment mortgage. So you'll have a repayment mortgage. So every single month, you pay your thousand pounds or whatever your payment is, and that will be paying off some of the balance and some of the interest. So your payments are significantly higher. So interest rate rises to you, while not great, they don't impact your payments as much as a landlord. Let's explain why. So a landlord will use something called an interest only mortgage. And so what we do is we just pay interest. So if we borrow £100,000 from someone, in 20 years, we'll still owe them £100,000. But we've made cash flow on that time and our property is increased in value. So that's the big difference there. And because we're only paying interest, when the rate doubles, then our payments double. So if we were on a deal that was 1% and now we're getting a deal that's 2%, our monthly payments are going to double. If we were on a deal that was 1% and now our payments are 4%, we're going to pay four times as much. Now, there are landlords out there that fix deals at 1% or there or thereabouts. They're going to come off those deals and not be able to get a deal that's better than 4%. So they're going to get clobbered with these new payments. That isn't going to be good for them. Now, they also might have something called Section 24, which implicates them because maybe they own the properties in their personal name. Not great again. And so that means that they're going to make no money, particularly on their deal, and just want to get out of the market. Now, what does that impact have? What impact does that have? Well, actually, quite a lot of landlords left the market in the last two years, believe it or not. And what impact we're seeing from that already is a huge rise in rent. And that is because there's not enough stock on the market and that's pushing up rent. The reason, another reason we're seeing rents go up is also because landlords have to increase the rent because the mortgage payments have gone up significantly. And so that's a real, real consideration here. So what other impacts does this have on us? Well, we went to 4.25 as our base up here, but we can still get deals if we shop around at 4%. They're not passing on all of that to us at the moment. So you can actually get better deals. And even last month, when it was at 4%, you could get 3.99% deals. And so you can get a slightly better deal than is the base rate at the moment. And that's because of something called the swap rate. The long-term outlook is that interest rates will come down. And so banks are able to offer a slightly better deal than you could expect. And so that is going to be great news. And so we're not expecting, but we don't know for sure, we're not expecting rates to go up really much more from now. The Bank of England have kind of talked about that recently. There's even been talk of rates coming down because these higher rates, who's really getting hit at the moment, are the banks themselves. 
And so you've seen two banks that have gone bust in America, Silicon Valley Bank and what was the other one called? Began with an S well, I can't remember what it called. Signature. Uh, Signature Bank as well. Both of those went bankrupt uh, and had to get bailouts in America. And that's because of higher interest rates. So if they keep raising the rates anymore, we could become, uh, we could start to see a banking crisis. Now, even where the rates are at, I think that you're going to start seeing banks get a lot more selective on who they lend to. They're going to tighten that criteria that little bit more and liquidity in funds is going to be a difficulty in 2023. So I think that borrowing money could get tougher, particularly for residential people. Now, what's the outcome of that? Now, I do a lot of videos where I talk about the market going up and the market going down. And a lot of people jump in the comments with keyboard warriors and trolls saying, you don't know what's going on. And I always make it clear in those videos that I'm just delivering somebody else's opinion. And so I think that house prices are actually going to go down this year. I think that house prices could go down as much as 8%. Now, we're already in the third month, nearly the fourth month. and We've not really seen any decline so far. But I think potentially house prices could go down. And so that's going to be an outcome because of this number here. Affordability is going to go down, right? That means people can't borrow so much. House prices have gone up in London, asking prices at least, because there are still some cash buyers in that market. But that's just one area. Big outside international investors focus on London. They don't focus on Dorking, where I live, or Coulston, or Brighton, or these other areas. They focus on London. That's where they've always put their money, right? And so I feel that we are going to see a downward trend. I don't think we're going to see a crash but I do think that the market is definitely going to be on the way down. Now, what that will then do will mean that buy to let potentially will start to work. As the prices go down and the rents go up, there'll be a point where it looks like that with the current interest rate will work. There will be a correction in the market of some sort. It doesn't have to be the prices going down. It could be the rents going up. Now, that's a consideration. Now, there's lots of opportunity with all of this stuff because there are people that just need to sell. So there are going to be landlords that are on 1% deals that are going to go to 4% that they can't keep that property for long because it's costing them more money than the rent that they achieve. And so they want to sell that property. Coupled with, if they own that in their own name, they're going to be paying huge amounts of tax. So there are ways around that. You could buy that property below market value you could then fix it on a good rate with a good um, uh, rental income. However, what you're also to be able to do is to buy in a limited company. And so you get all the tax benefits of being in that limited company. That is very, very, very powerful. And that's what we want to be able to do uh, with you guys. Uh, and, and so that's what you need to be looking at is buying opportunities. Now, there are also things like just a standard buy to let. They are still going to be tough. So you might be able to get a deal like that work. Up north, probably more likely than the south. However, you need to look at other strategies in the market as well. Particularly when the interest rates are high, you need higher cash flow. So look at things like serviced accommodation. We talk about that on this channel. Look at things like HMOs. We talk about them on this channel. Houses of multiple occupancy. Look at things like buy, refurbish, refinance. We talk about that on this channel and lease options. There are tons of different strategies. You've just got to take the right strategy from the toolbox to use at the right time. This period right now, buy to let isn't the right strategy. It's massively getting clobbered with all of this stuff and new legislation that's on the way. So you should be looking at the higher cash flow strategies where it doesn't matter what comes out and the new legislation, this will still work for you. But what do you think of the property market at the moment? Do you think it's gonna crash? Do you think the interest rates are gonna go up even higher? There's an expectation that they could go up, but they've also said inflation is expected to drop this quarter, which starts in April, which is around the corner. So I'd love to know your comments below. If you want an investment guide on how to invest in property, strategies that work today, I've pinned a comment below. It will be the top comment there. And if you want to know about lease options and how to buy a house for a pound, go and watch this video right here.